Fellas, let's talk some late round sleepers that have the upside to win you your fantasy league. If you guys are new to the channel, be sure to subscribe, help us out, um, and shout out to uh, the Discord as well. Active in there if you guys do want to play in a fantasy league with us. We're going to have a listener league, so join the Discord. That link is down below in the description. Let's get to the first player who wants to start. I think I'll, I'll give go it to Cole. Cole. Go Cole. Okay, so my first guy is Damian Pierce, who has shot up draft boards in the preseason, and especially after week one when he averaged nine yards a carry against whatever third stringers he played. <laughs> but he's currently going as the RB52, I believe, right above Naheem Hines and Marquez Valdez-Scanling, who Naheem Hines is the RB2 to the running back who had the most volume in the league last season, and Valdez-Scanling is the wide receiver three and probably the fourth or fifth receiving option in that offense, actually. Um, Pierce is a guy who didn't get used much at Florida. Dan Mullen kind of hated him. Before Dan Mullen was fired, he didn't have a single game over 10 carries. But the two games after Mullen got fired, both of them he had 10-plus carries and had 7-plus yards a carry. And and put together one of the most legendary clips of college football history. I think that was the bowl. Was that the With bowl the game coming off? or Florida State where he yeah where he had the helmet come off and he just kept running and tried to run someone over and got to the end zone? Oh, I don't remember that. He got a penalty and the play play was called back. Yeah, this man. time we will roll the footage, Hunter. Roll the footage. Red zone. Hands it off to Pierce. Great cutback. Pierce lost his hat, but not his mind. Touchdown. But there's a flag down. Dean Pierce is a legend for that one. Yeah, he also had the highest rushing grade for any PFF running back in the FBS last season with 92. So he was a guy who should have been getting the carries, but he wasn't getting the carries at Florida. But that's a positive now in the NFL. He doesn't really have a lot of tread on his tires. He hasn't been bruised up like a lot of other running backs coming into the NFL. The, the Texans running back room is bare. It's Marlon Mack, who personally I don't really like. I don't think he's a huge option. He will be the running back one to start out the season, but I definitely think Pierce could take that job. And I think Levy Smith said this quote. We'll also put this up on the screen. He said he described Pierce as a guy that can run with power, make you miss, cut, cut on a dime, and even catch the ball. So he's a guy that can do everything. His head coach says he can do everything. He hasn't play, had a ton of tread in college, and he's a very skilled back. So I don't see how Marlon Mack holds on to the running back one job the entire season. And if he can take that job, he's the lowest drafted starting running back in all of fantasy football. All yeah, the 100%. Yeah, 31 other teams, their running back ones, and some running back twos are going over him. So hmm. Yeah, 100%. I think the the... Deal in, the deal in Houston has been, especially at running back, is something people have been able to, I guess, take advantage of a little bit, like in through free or through the waiver wire. Like Rex Burkhead had a few games where he where he popped and gave you some really good production. I remember people in in some of the DFS contests on our site did really well with Rex Burkhead. He was in some like um, first place lineups in in our contests. Oh, wow. um, but yeah, now Pierce has the chance to really claim that role to himself, which they haven't had since what? Um, am I? Th is there someone I'm missing since Arian Foster? No. Right. So uh, like David Johnson, but he's oh, David Johnson, Johnson had, hit, right. he had a good season. Yes, David Johnson. But not not with the Texans. Though? Oh yeah, not with the Texans. It wasn't. Oh it, no, true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. With, that, with that was after the D-hop trade, yeah. worst trade I've ever seen in the history of football. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I mean, I think I think Pierce lacks upside because I think the Texans will stink and they're not going to run the ball much. But getting a three down guy that late in the draft is going to be really nice. For sure. No, I agree. I, I like Pierce this year, too. Like, we haven't heard anything about Marlon Mack, and yeah. we've heard a lot about Damian Pierce, so God. I'm thinking that if not before the regular season, week one or week two, that this guy's going to be taking this the lead role in this backfield. Yeah. And, I, like, I actually like the Texans' offense more than a lot of people do. I do think Davis Mills is, is serviceable and pretty good, and I think the receiving options are better than what people might give them credit for. John Mechie out for a bit, but I think that opens up the... The way for Damian Pierce to really get going at the early parts of this season. Yeah, yeah. his ADP has been rising in the offseason, but he's still going behind like straight up handcuff running backs like yeah, Alexander sure. Madison, Isaiah Spiller. They're yeah. going 10, 20 picks above him. Yeah, so. right. Yeah, it makes sense. Shout out Trent in our in our Discord. He's he's one of the most active guys in our Discord. He sent me a, D, a message on Discord the other day showing me his team, and I, the only reason that I'd be like Damian Pierce doesn't have he he sent me a team and he had Damian Pierce and Tyler Algier yes. like as his backups. Huh. Yes, so two of two of your, Shout your out guys, Trent. guys. But I was like, ah, I like the team, but I think you need more upside in the in the um, 
like on the bench because I just that's the only concern I have with yeah. with Pierce is just like where what's the ceiling this year? If you look up upside in the dictionary, there's a picture of Tyler Algier. <laughs> this is what last that's time just I a checked. Fucking lie. I mean, we could get into that at another yeah. time, but okay. Um, my sleeper, and I've talked about him before. We talked about him in our, in our guys that we're looking at in training camp and kind of where they're going. And it's it's Jalen Tolbert. Like I can't get enough of this guy right now, especially where he's getting drafted. Like guys going before him right now. Like there's one one name in particular, and I find it so funny. And this is why you watch videos like this. P- Julio Jones is going like ten receiver spots ahead of Jalen Tolbert right now, and just because of his name, really, he's probably going to be the wide receiver four in this off in this Bucks offense. You're getting Jalen Tolbert, a guy who's going to start the season probably as a wide receiver too, unless Noah Brown somehow beats him out there, but he's going to be on the field so much with James Washington out for uh, eight to ten weeks, Michael Gallup out for six to eight weeks to start the season as well, I believe. Um, and there's even other rookies, like Jameson Williams, his status is up in the air, where he's going to start, um, he, uh, when he's going to start. I don't it, Probably not week one. I would think at least maybe into week four. Uh, this guy had an insane year at South Alabama in his senior year. Uh, 80 Over 80 catches, over 1,400 receiving yards, eight touchdowns. Um, and every single coach and even player has been raving about this kid in training camp, saying how prepared he is, his route running ability. Um, there's even a quote that I saw today. Uh, one reporter asked, or Jordan Schultz asked, um, one of the un- unnamed sources, a player on the Cowboys, he said, He's a dude, question mark. And the guy said, yes, he has big playability and Dak already uh, trusts Stamp him. Of approval. Dude, so dude. that's, yeah, he's a dude. He is, he will be that dude for your fantasy team if you take him, uh, where his current ADP at. And even like, he, he's like that guy that you can take as your last pick. Like he'll still be available in 12 man leagues. He'll definitely still be there, I think. Or maybe your second last pick. But I love this kid. Um, I think he's set up for success in this Cowboys offense. And we've seen Dak be able to spread out the ball and make number of uh, Cowboys receivers relevant over the years. Yeah, completely agree. Like, I don't have too much more. We've talked about this guy. The Cowboys throw the ball a ton. Um, he's, he, yes, he's a rookie, but he's a very, he's a four-year guy out of South Alabama. So he's an older guy who's been around in terms of college production, was there. He was, I think, he was, I think, didn't, was it you that said this to me or was it Ryan that said this to me about his target share in yeah, college? Like 36% was, target yeah, share like, in college. Just ridiculous. Crazy. Like, But it's not, like we've talked, so about but Alabama is right, horrible. Yeah. But yes, still. yes. But being able to, to have that kind of share of any offense in college yeah. is impressive. Yeah, like it goes sure. to show that even when everybody knows you're getting the ball, you're still making plays, right? So I, I like Tolbert too. I don't have too much more on him. Do you? Yeah, kind of. He's just he's a premier deep threat. He led the uh, I think college football in twenty plus targets, receptions, and yards. Granted, as we said, at South Alabama, but still, he's a guy that will be able to translate that to the Cowboys, and he has a clear role Mm -hmm. in the offense that threw the second most last season. So this one's pretty obvious. Yeah, Yeah. definitely agreed. Uh, Last one. This is my chance to talk quarterbacks. Justin Fields of the Chicago Bears. Something we don't talk about too much on the show. Um, We're big on the YouTube SEO that people just don't seem to care about (laughs) quarterbacks or tight ends. But he's going as the quarterback 17 in the 12th round. So this is a guy you get pretty much at the end of your drafts. Um, He's my quarterback 13. So I'm a fair bit higher on him than consensus. Um, Let's get to the bat. The bat. Obviously, last season, seven seven touchdowns, ten interceptions, um, was not was not good fantasy points wise per game. I'm pretty sure he was like the QB forty. It was it was not a good year under Matt Nagy. The Matt Nagy is also just a complete and utter joke and embarrassment yeah. to football. He's a um, doofus. It, it just doesn't make sense what was going on last year. So Fields had 420 rushing yards, uh, which was fourth of the position, and he played ten started ten games last year. So he he did. He had 420 rushing yards in 10 games. You extrapolate that over the entirety of the season, and then he's up there with, you know, Jalen Hurts, um, Lamar Jackson, Josh Allen, who aver- who each totaled uh, just over 700 yards. His pace would have been like 714, but almost 80 percent of his attempts were scrambles. Just no design That's runs. Crazy. None. No RPO, which was the thing he- was his bread and butter at OSU, and that was so b- RPO with Nagy. Just four percent of plays. That's that's just ridiculous, horrible. Luke Getzey now comes in yeah, from Getzey. the from you know the sh- bringing that kind of Shanahan scheme, especially like with Lafleur, who's obviously worked with Shanahan. The RPO scheme, I think, is going to be or the R- the level of RPO and the amount of play action you're going to see is going to be much higher, and I think you're going to see a lot more design runs and Fields yards per attempt on play action. 8.9 yards, which was 12th at the position. He was actually great in play action. And Matt Nagy said, fuck that. I'm going to make this guy's life miserable and have him drop back play after play after play with a horrific offensive line. So now I think 
pocket's going to be moving. Offensive line's going to be moving. I think they're going to keep opposing linebackers and defensive linemen guessing a fair bit more. That's going to give him more time to be productive as a passer, but also I think he can reach 800 rushing yards on the year. And if you can get that at the quarterback position, that's a huge advantage. The last thing I'll say as to why this guy is going to be title of the video is sleepers that can win you then help that can end up winning your league is fields will be able to be a top 12 quarterback in my mind but also being able to take a quarterback that gives you that kind of production mm. at the end of your drafts gives you the chance of let's say you know instead of taking fields you want to take Dak Prescott well he's going in the eighth round and let me like, let me tell you who to take in the eighth round. I'd take Elijah Moore instead of taking Dak Prescott. I'd much rather have Elijah Moore, Justin Fields, than, let's say, um, who else is going in the, in the 12th round. Like, an Isaiah Spiller as a handcuff yeah. who never really works out. This gives you the chance to, to, to stack up those more important positions in fantasy to you. So that's the other reason why I really like going after Fields at the end of my draft. Yeah, I, I love everything you had to say about Justin Fields. Mm -hmm. I think it, the... The bringing, bringing Luke Getze in is definitely going to uplift this offense. Like the zone running scheme that they kind of ran in Green Bay yeah. obviously worked really well for the running backs. And even Rodgers, like Rodgers is mobile, but Justin Fields is even more mobile. So yeah. I'm really excited to see what Getze is going to be able to do in, with this offense. The one thing is, I like I have him ranked as my QB 16. So I have him one higher than what uh, his regular ADP is. Mm -hmm. And that's ahead of uh, two, I think it's like right in front of him right now. Okay. Um, but the guys like after that, like Kirk Cousins, Derek Carr, I'd probably take them before I take Fields just because of like, there's a little bit more certainty in what you're going to get. Like Kirk yep. Cousins is going to throw for a ton of yards. Derek Carr has the last three, two or three years, um, especially with his starts at, at the beginning of the season too. So yep. um, the unknown scares me a little bit of Justin Fields, but I think this is obviously like he'll have much better success than he did last year. So yeah. I, the running yards obviously is huge for quarterbacks. Yes. It's one of the reasons why I'm taking Jalen Hurts in a lot of my leagues, but um, yeah, that's that's kind of what my take on Fields. No, I get that. Like, I, I think I think the thing for me is that I'd rather take Fields because of the upside, but I know the floor is nowhere near what those guys have. Like yeah, Carr and yeah. Carr and he has and, no floor. Yeah, yeah. Fields, yeah. Fields, exactly. Fields, Fields floor could be could be anywhere. Exactly. Anything else you got? Fields um, wise? Well, I'll play devil's advocate here. Sure. So w what do you think changes? Because his receivers are worse. His offensive line is worse. His running backs are the same. So there's the rushing yards. But if teams are just zoned in on him running, what else is he going to do? Yeah. Well, I think it's, I think it's going to be hard to, to be zoned in on the run if they're in play action. Like, I think they're going to run the ball. Like, that's what the Packers scheme does. Um, and then I just think, honestly, think better play calling is going to lead to more scoring yeah. opportunities. They actually have the fifth easiest strength or fourth easiest strength of schedule, um, according to Vegas win totals. So getting into some some games that they can win and score will will be able to, to help us finish, too. Yeah, that's, just don't that's line them up under center. Like, just always have him yeah, in the shotgun. A little <laughs> or, less or, drop or if it's too. play action, too. Tevin like. Jenkins has looked better in camp. I know they were talking about trading him, but um, he is at camp and he's looked better. So if he if he could be playing well, that will improve the offensive line. The line was terrible. Like, no yeah. no doubt about that. Mm -hmm. uh, all right, that's about it. That's the, the uh, Did you guys have anyone that you were thinking of? I guess we could fire off a few if we want to. Um... I didn't really have too many other guys that, like Tyler Algiers, another guy, obviously. Yeah, who's Romeo around that Dooms scene. was one I thought about. Uh, yeah, I'm, uh, I, I'm so in between on him now because of what, like all the reports I've seen. But now I'm seeing Aaron Rodgers, like, yeah, like the rookies are really young. And then yeah. I saw that clip of Dooms just dropping a pass, like outright. And Aaron Rodgers could have fully been talking about him or maybe one of the other guys. Yeah. Uh, so Josh Palmer was another one I thought about. Just mm. Keenan Allen's 30. Palmer's been. Working with him for the last two years, I see. I'm a Chargers fan, so I see, read every single Canadian training camp report. Too. And yes, yeah, yeah. Um, and he's been really good in camp. And he's he's his route running is what makes him so great. Like if anything happens to Keenan, this kid could be for a huge year. Anyone you debated? Um, I mean, we talked about him yesterday, but Isaiah Pacheco. So yep. you can mm. really talk, I can really talk about him. Yep. Um, going a little bit earlier than we, he's in the top 120, but like 118 Sky Moore. Yeah, 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 about yeah definitely. But he's kind of, he's not, he's in a higher range than the guys we Yeah, but that's certainly a guy that could win you your league. Yeah. yeah. No doubt. Yeah. All right. Um, that is everything for today. If you guys have any other guys you've been thinking about, fire them down below in the comments. Let us know what you think of the video. Drop a like, subscribe to the channel, and again, join our Discord. That link is down below in the description. Thank you guys for watching, and we'll see you next time.